Good morning, guys. My name is Pete Momat, and I am Chief Commercial Officer of a new futures exchange called The Small Exchange. And I want to spend a little bit of time with you today telling you about this new futures exchange, how it works, what it's going to do, and how it's going to hopefully empower you guys to take your, uh, your trading to the next level. Um, we are incredibly excited to be working with Trade Ideas. Dan and Dave have been tremendous uh, proponents with us. Uh, I want to thank Sean McLaughlin, McLaughlin for helping us and Marissa for working through. I got a little bit of different slide presentation. My BD and products team just put this together, so bear with me. It's got a lot of animation, so we'll hopefully get through it. But I uh, wanted to tell you a little bit about myself. I had been a futures trader for 31 years. I started when I was 20 years old on the floor of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. And I was able to participate in one of the fastest growing segments of business in the futures world during the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s. And one of the things we saw was the first dramatically leveling of the playing field with electronification. And Dan, and Dan talked about this very early on in his presentation. We saw that leveling of the playing field, and that was incredibly empowering to a much broader array of traders. And we moved off the trading floor, and we started doing other things. One of the things that we started to think about was creating a futures exchange and making it um, accessible to a much broader audience. Right now, we know we can take our mouse and glide it over 4,000 different products, choose what we want to trade, and act on that. Uh, I remember my time in the, I, spent, I traded a lot of foreign currency, Euro FX, and to trade crude oil, I had to fight my way out of 150 other knuckleheads, pick up a phone, call New York, and wait two hours to get a fill back on crude oil. So that, that empowerment of electronification and technology open futures to such a large audience. Um, what did it change, though? Accessibility to products and opportunities that fit a much broader audience. And Dan mentioned this. When Trade Ideas was built, they took the model, they turned it upside down, and they built what traders needed. They started from the ground over, up, and they started over. We did the same thing at the small exchange. We took all the challenges that current futures have fitting into an active trader's portfolio, and we've tried to simplify them, standardize them, and make them simple. So existing future products are a little bit more dynamic than existing stocks. They are a little bit more economical than existing stocks, and they're also a little bit more accurate. What I'm talking about here is in terms of dynamic. Futures afford you leverage. We know in the world of equities right now, we have uh, Reg T margin, so it's 50% margin on our equities trading. Futures offer you a leverage of between 15 and 20 times the amount of capital you're posting, and that's powerful. You know, leverage often is a pejorative word. In this particular case, you're gonna find it very, uh, very powerful, uh, ec economical. And what I mean by that is you're controlling a large amount of underlying for a very small amount of capital. Accurate pure price exposure. I want to trade crude. I don't want to trade crude through a refiner. I don't want to trade um, bonds through a bank or a, uh, a financial firm. Uh, part of the problem, though, with the existing futures, they're huge. They're built for institutions. They're institutionally sized. They're institutionally uh, priced. And uh, once I moved off the floor, we, did a, we had a a brokerage firm, and we did a lot of education and training, and trying to get someone to understand a treasury bond future. The fact that they're still quoted in fractions, and that conversely, if you think rates are going higher, you sell the product. If you think rates are going lower, you're buying it. And then when you start talking about different durations, convexity, and DV01, pretty much everyone has walked out of the room. So we're trying to simplify all those processes, uh, parts. Unwieldy. The amount of movement in futures markets right now with that institutional size is a great struggle. We, depending on the active trader, we all have a portfolio. We're trying to get diversified. We're trying to find interesting occurrences. How can we add futures? Well, right now, a crude oil contract is $55,000 of crude. Now, can you get that exposure effectively? Absolutely. Cost efficiently? Absolutely. But I don't want a bite of a pie that's moving $1,300 a day. It doesn't fit into my risk profile, my risk tolerances, or my strategies. I've worked so hard to develop 
and put into practice. So how can we downsize that? And that's one of the things we're working on. Confusing, I mentioned it. Uh, bonds quoted in fractions, uh, equity indexes quartered, and depending on the equity index, a quarter of a tick, a tenth of a tick, a twentieth of a tick. Um, now I got a question for you. Natural gas is quoted in 10,000 million BTUs per unit. And does, and I had actually looked this up, but does anybody know what a BTU is? <laughs> oh, see, so yeah, now you guys are smart, okay? You're much smarter than my guys. Uh, right, it's a British thermal unit, or what it takes, what it takes, I had to look this up, to heat one gallon of water by one degree, the amount of energy. So when you start looking at stuff like that, it becomes almost, you know, uh, 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 un unfathomable to kind of assimilate all that information. Go through that learning curve without really having uh, a struggle trying to adopt these products. So small exchange products, three core tenets. When we built this exchange, we wanted them to be small. We wanted them to be very efficient exposures of an opinion with all the benefits of futures. And guys, remember, and I want you to, a lot of you probably, I don't know your experience with futures, but there are a lot of benefits with futures, the capital efficiency. If you're trading in the world of active equities, there is no pattern day trading rules with futures. It's a, it's a neutral security. You can go long, you can go short, easily as either one. Uh, there is preferential tax treatment. Now, whether you hold a future for a second, a minute, or a year, it's treated with what they call a 60-40 blended rate. 60% long-term, 40% short-term. So a very effective tax rate. Futures standardized. This is one of the things we found was the greatest barrier to get guys on board. The BTUs, the bushels, the barrels, the bars. They're, they're a hurdle nobody wants to go through. So what we did is we standardized everything. You know, natural gas has a $10 tick. Uh, bonds have 31 and a quarter. Notes, $15.62 and a half cents. And the painful math exercise of that makes them non-starters for so many people. So our exchange has $1 wide ticks. You pick a product, everything is trades in $1 wide ticks. They're quoted two decimal points to the right. They look, they smell, they feel, they're quoted, just like the stocks you trade every day. So all of a sudden, I'm getting a futures product with all the benefits that it offers, and it's starting to look exactly like what I like to use. Simple. Now futures, unlike stocks, they expire. And what I mean is, by name, futures contract, at some point in the future, that contract expires. Well, if you look, and we'll, we'll kind of go through this a little bit, if you look at a traditional futures calendar, every month, the entire, every single day of the calendar is full. It's November net gas options expiration, it's December wheat futures expiration. There is nothing uniform about the world of futures. Products have different expiration times, different expiration dates. One of the things we wanted to do is go through each of these pain points and eliminate them. So guys, just to give you a little color about what is a futures exchange, what is the small exchange? Now exchange is a, we facilitate trade. We don't go out and directly clear customer business. Uh, we facilitate the execution of that business. So whether you're working with trade ideas through interactive brokers or your own platform, we will take that business and match it. And what's really cool is the way futures are matched. There is no preference. There is no lead market maker. There's no guy that you don't see who's quoting a price that's different. There's, I don't know if you've ever heard the term first look or last look. Guys who can kind of, your order looks kind of good. I'm going to take part of yours. Yeah, not so much. I'm going to move it on. So futures have what they call a central limit order book. And that means every order comes to the same spot, whether it's my five lot or your 5,000 lot. If I'm first in line, I get first, I get filled first. And that holds true all of our World of Futures products. There is no preference. And that's one of the things we wanted to do. Because traditionally, exchanges, you sit at the top, larger institutions, they have the lowest fees, they have the easiest transactions in terms of preference of execution, they've got all the edge. We want to turn that around and give the edge back to the self-directed individual trader and empower them. So when I talk about small, we want to reduce exposure, not opportunity. And what I mean by that is bringing trades down to a reasonable size. And you know, it kind of remind, reminds me of this, this story of dad goes to his son, I'm sorry, son goes to his dad and says, hey dad, explain to me the, the difference 
between potentially and realistically. And dad thinks for a minute and he goes, well, I tell you what, go ask your mom if she'd sleep with Brad Pitt for a million dollars. Go ask your sister if she'd sleep with Brad Pitt for a million dollars. And then go ask your brother. See what he'd say about sleeping with Brad Pitt for a million dollars. So the boy, obviously confused, little check back, hey, it's my dad. You know, I, I can count on him. So he goes to his mom and he goes, Ma, I got a question for you. Would you sleep with Brad Pitt for a million bucks? And she goes, of course. We could redo the house. We could send you guys off to college. It's all good. Look what we can do. He said, like, okay, I get that one. And he goes to his sister and she goes, uh, he says, sis, would you sleep with Brad Pitt for a million bucks? And she goes, of course, the man's gorgeous. He's a hunk, he's you know, worth a fortune. Why wouldn't I do that? And he kind of expected that answer. He goes to his brother and he says, dude, weird question. Will you sleep with Brad Pitt for a million bucks? And he sits there and he thinks for a minute. He goes, you know, two Ferraris, a Maserati, and some cash left over. I don't know, I might have to say yes. So with that, the boy's a little bit confused. He goes back to his dad, and the dad says to him, okay, what can you tell me about the difference between potentially and realistically? And he turns to his dad and he says, dad, potentially we're sitting on three million bucks. <laughs> realistically, we're living with two hookers and a future congressman. So <laughs> potentially and realistically are very important concepts in trading. You look at large futures. Potentially, can you knock it out of the park? Sure. Crude moves $1,300 a day. Mini NASDAQ, and it's almost an oxymoron. They call it mini, $1,800 a day. You know what? A lot of us don't want or it doesn't fit that kind of exposure. So we want to provide opportunity in terms of exposure, but give you realistic expectations around what that is. So I just want you to take a quick look here. And this is a chart of crude oil recently. And you take a look at the movement. The upper one is your traditional CME, WTI future, forward slash CL. Now you look at the small exchange and it looks, I don't know, it looks like you know a bad situation at the ER. There's no movement to it. But what we're gonna find is once we scale that, and look at the movement in our product, the small product, versus that underlying movement in the benchmark product, it's almost 38,000 from the high and low in those CME futures, and it's almost um, $1,300 in ours. So I'm sorry, $800 in ours. So what we've done is create the exact same product in terms of movement. What you guys are look at, look, used to looking at, crude oil, gold, bonds, equities, but make it size to a point that makes it very comfortable for you. So just as an equivalency basis on a daily move, as I mentioned, crude oil moves about $1,200 a day. Our SMGO, Smalls Global Oil, and we've taken several benchmarks to create a global oil index, moves about $125 a day. So you get a product with all the benefits of futures that moves much slower. Our 10-year yield product, I love this product because as we talked about, bonds, it's amazing. Uh, Dan and Dave, you, you have to help me. How many years ago did we move away from fractionalized equity trading? It has to be what, 20 years? 2002. 2002, okay, so almost 18 years. Bond futures are still quoted in fractions, and depending on the future, it's 164th, 132nd, or 1 128th. So it is impossible to really start to. I mean, I've been trading for 31 years. I trade them, but the amount of time it took to get these under your belt is difficult. So what we've done is we've created, again, what resonates in your everyday life? Interest rates, but not in the world of bonds. Bonds closed 159.31 on Friday. Now, I don't think anybody can tell me what is the yield on the 20-year note from that price. Actually, I gotta go back and look it up to tell you. Uh, but we wanted to give you a product that trades the way you trade every day, which is in terms of yield. So whether it's your Home loan, your car loan, your student loan, depending on it, we hear yield every day. We hear the 10 years under 2%, the 10 years close to 150. The yield curve is inverted. All these pieces are termed in yield. Our product is quoted in yield. So it's a 10 year constant maturity yield. You think rates are rising? You buy it. You think they're falling? You sell it. It's as simple as that. So uh, our equity index, it's interesting. What we've done is create what we call the small 75. And it is 75 single name underlines composed from five sectors, 15 underlines in each of the sectors. And we have a matrix of weighting that includes volume, capitalization, 
and volatility. So what it turns out to be is those 75 names happen to be some of the names you guys are trading every single day as active equity traders, whether it be uh, Amazon or Tesla or Netflix. Those higher volatility pieces live within our index. So it becomes a very, very interesting index to trade. Strong correlation to the S&Ps, not perfect, because we wanted to create something that was proprietary and unique to us that did move like the rest of the equity world, but had its own flavor, its own taste. Good, interesting trade. If you're trading any of those active stocks, trading those stocks against our product is a great basis trade, a great hedge, a really interesting trade in and of its own. If you're looking to hedge equity exposure in a passive way, these become powerful tools too, because in a capitally efficient way, you can add on those short deltas or neutralize that long passive portfolio very easily, very efficiently. Our, in, our metals index is called Smalls Precious Metals. And what it is, is it's a proprietary mixture of gold, silver, and platinum. And why did we do that? Why didn't we just go with gold? Well, you know, there's GLD, CME has forward slash GC. That's been done. We wanted to create something that was holistic in the metal space. You know, I think if you guys have watched it all, traded any SIL or GLD, you've seen the movement in silver recently. It's far outpaced gold in the last three months. And it's often, when you're looking at precious metals, which one do I pick? Platinum, gold, silver, they all move at different times. I don't pick, you know, if I have to pick off times, I don't pick the right one for what I want. We're giving you holistic expo exposure to the entire precious metals complex. And that, we feel, is really powerful. So you don't have to pick a metal. You just have to have an idea. So who are the Smalls products built for? And I apologize, guys. We got a lot of new traders looking for affordable products. And when I say affordable, I'm talking about the amount of notional, the amount of capital required in terms of leverage, and the amount of movement. Those all make them affordable to me. Existing traders, guys like you, your active equity traders trading in and out every day. These become great substitutions and enhancements into your trading portfolio. You guys have spent a lot of effort, a lot of time, and I say this in the most complimentary way possible, a lot of money going through the process of learning this, and money in terms of Every trader loses, it's part of the process, and it's a question of how much do you lose and how quickly if you stay in the game. Um, you know, today you've got guys like Brian Shannon, uh, uh, Paul, uh, uh, Donnie Hensley here all to talk to you, and they have, you've got some of the best traders in the world who are great traders, great mentors, all who are helping you get through that journey without getting stuck too often. We're hoping these products become great great compliments to what they're talking about. So this is one of the big points we talk about, standardized trading. They call future standard. Well, if you call 5,000 bushels of corn, 10,000 million BTUs of natural gas, or um, you know, 125,000 euros as a standard product, they never change, but they're hard to, it's, it's a plethora of stuff you have to assimilate before you ever start trading. We want you guys to start trading and not spend time studying. That's a new one from our guys. So uh, when we look at contract specs, they're different for stocks, currencies, bonds, energies, metals. We talked about that. SMFE contract specs, they are all the same. Now, this is the current world of futures. In the world of rates, we talked about this. Here's how you convert what you made today. Say I, I made 10 ticks a bond. I've got to take the price change, which is fractionalized. I've got to find out what the treasury factor is, use the multiplier, and figure out the tick value. Every one of these products, different tick value, different multiplier, different challenge. This really is, so if we could, what we did is we took a clean play. Let's take out every piece that has been confusing, that has taken us time to learn, and most importantly, has taken other traders that we've mentored and brought in through the process, difficult to learn. So on the small side, what do we see? All smalls products trade in what we call one penny, but remember, our multiplier standardized is 100. So they look and feel just like a stock, index, like a stock or an ETF, quoted two points to the right. Each tick is a dollar. So that means that each one-tenth of a point increment is a $1 tick. And that's whether you're trading interest rates, metals, energy, or FX. They're all the same. 
So just to give you a sense, some of the differences here. Gold, $10 tick. Stocks, $12.5 ticks. The euro, six and a quarter. In the world of smalls, here it comes. Our metals, our equities, our foreign exchange, all $1 wide ticks. So again, you guys, all the barriers that make it difficult to assume and put in these products, we talked about the expiration cycle. This is one of the most challenging. It still catches me off guard that I will get a notice. By the way, you know, you've got X amount of Aussie dollars on and they're going to expire in two days. Are you planning on covering them or are we going to cover them for you? And you look at this calendar, everything expires on a different day. And when you add actually all the options, every single day, every single month is full. What have we done at the small exchange? You don't have to be keeping a calendar because everything in the world of smalls expires on the third Friday of the month at three o'clock, just like equity options do. So that's very simple, very straightforward. We think very powerful. Again, simplifying the process. There's one price, there's one expiration, and I like this one, there's zero confusion. So these guys have really, we've worked very hard to make this very simple to understand. So, and let's talk about simple. We want you to make one right turn, not three left turns. And what that means is we want you to use your time. You guys are investing the most precious thing you have, which is time, to, to better understand the markets. You're levering, leveraging resources of technology that's state of the art. You're le leveraging resources of traders who are willing to share and spend the time mentoring you. We don't want you to spend time getting comfortable with our products. Put them to work. So again, just run through the products. Our small global oil index is an international bench benchmark of crudes. Right now, and I'm not sure how aware you guys are within futures, you could trade West Texas Intermediate, Brent, Dubai, Shanghai, Houston, the list goes on and on. Which one do I pick? And you know what? Depending on the day, there's no telling which one you want to pick if you have an opinion on crude oil. We take several different benchmarks, we turn them into an oil index, and we take the picking out of the equation for you guys. So you can just trade crude oil. Now, one of the things I wanted to mention now is with our equity indexes, all of our, I'm sorry, all of our uh, futures contracts are cash settled indices. And what does that mean? We've all heard about, you know, I don't want the 5,000 bushels of corn in my backyard or the 1,000 barrels of crude in my pool. That really never happens. Very few futures contracts go to delivery. But what we've done is built cash settled indexes. So at the end of expiration, you don't get a notice or like the phone call I get, you get a debit or credit. The contract expires, you get a simple debit or credit, it's gone. So management and, and maintenance of these are very, very simple and straightforward. As I had mentioned, our 10-year yield program uh, contract simplifies. It takes that whole price conversion out of the equation and lets you trade yield. This is the first contract of its type anywhere in the world. And our US dollar index. We wanted, I talked about product relevancy. How do we make products relevant in the world today? Let me take just a quick break, grab some. Man, I gotta tell you, I flew in from Chicago yesterday. It was 43 degrees of raining when I left. And I checked into the hotel here, it's 70 degrees, and I'm having cucumber infused water. And there was actually a yoga mat in my closet. So this is not Chicago. <laughs> and, my wife called me, because I'm leaving at 12.30, and she's like, you know, it's supposed to rain and then turn to snow. Well, I hope you get home on time. And I'm thinking, this is the one time in my life traveling. I'm hoping for a five-day flight delay, because <laughs> this cannot be met. I, it's just unbelievable. But so our dollar index, there's lots of ways to trade currency. Paul and I were talking about it. He trades a lot of Euro FX. Wouldn't it be great to be able to trade a basket of currencies? You know, one of our greatest exposures as traders is dollars. You know, we buy equities and we pay for them in dollars. We buy crude, we buy gold, we pay for them in dollars. One of our greatest exposures as traders is to the dollar. We've got a dollar-based product with renminbi included in it. So all of a sudden, we, China's in the news every day, whether it's a trade war or a growth war or uh, the health of their economy. We've now built a dollar index that includes and incorporates one of the fastest growing economies in the world, and one of the largest, the fastest growing traded currencies in the world. So simple way to get exposure to all the major currencies in one single trade with $5,000 in notional and less than $100 in capital required. As I mentioned, our small 75 index 
It's created out of 75 of the largest capitalized, highest volatility indices, uh, single names, that create a really interesting index relationship. Um, still has a correlation to the S&Ps of about 0.82 or 0.84%. So it's an interesting reflection of a little bit different slice of the market. As I mentioned, our precious metals index, that combination of gold, silver, and platinum, not having to pick a metal, but having the basket presented to you to trade under your own schedule. So the smalls exchange, again, small products. They're clear context. They're manageable. They're easy to understand. Universal construction, equivalent ticks, equivalent expirations, simple to understand processes. And they're simple in terms of context. I want to trade crude. We wanted to build products that resonate in every single person's daily life. You hear about crude every single day. You hear about rates, equities. You hear about metals. Here's your way to express an opinion about them. And guys, just to let you know a little bit about what makes a futures exchange different? What makes us different? Well, we make, as an exchange, we're materially different in the products we offer in terms of size, simplicity. What do we do? How do we make business? We're a facilitator of trade. We don't, you guys don't come to us to open an account. You guys know where to go to open an account. What we do is take that order flow, match it, and send it off for clearing. And the way futures trades are matched are really a game changer for a lot of people. Futures trades flow into what's called a central limit order book. And I know that sounds painfully boring. All it means is a level playing field. Every order, buy, sell, one lot, thousand lot, goes to the same place and is matched there. Time priority basis, which means if you're first or you're first, you get filled first. No matter how big that order is behind you, it is a great leveler of the playing field. So this is incredible. No lead market maker algorithm, no last look, first look, none of this stuff that, and I've talked with a couple of guys around here, I talked with Jeff, uh, the idea that, you know, I'm working 11s on the offer and I see that I was first on the book and now that we're up at 11, all of a sudden there's 4,000 lots ahead of me. That transparency of the book and futures is incredibly powerful. So guys, lots of reasons to look at futures for their efficiency, their fairness, and the leveling of the playing field. So. If you're interested, one of the things we're offering, and again, to empower individual traders, active investors, active participants, is a subscription offer. And what that is for the small exchange is one-time lifetime fee. You pay $100. For that, you get a lifetime 50% reduction on all exchange fees. So your exchange fees, which are incredibly small because of the smaller size of the products, get cut in half. Market data fees, which will be free for a year, get cut in half. So for this one-time investment, you receive this benefit for the life of your trading journey. So if you're interested in this, just go to subscribers.thesmallexchange.com. And I think that finishes it up for me. If you want more information, I'm peter.molmet at thesmallexchange.com. Again, thank you guys. Thank Trade Ideas for being uh, such a gracious host and partner for The Small Exchange. And we look forward to seeing all you guys in the future. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm.